So today I want to talk to you guys about my worst, and I do mean my absolute worst Turo experience to date. This is not a messy guest. This is not a guest who leaves dog hair. This is not a guest who has a delayed check-in or check-out. This experience is next level bad, and that's what we're going to talk about. Now, I like to think of myself as the queen of the side hustle, which is how I even came to know of Turo. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Turo, Turo is essentially a peer-to-peer -peer sharing platform that allows you to become your own rental car agency. Basically Airbnb, but for cars. So with me having the hustler's mentality that I have, when I heard about the Turo platform, I knew I needed a piece of the action, and that's precisely what I did. Speaking of hustling, if you're in the Austin area and you need professional Turo fleet management or Airbnb management, feel free to drop me a message and let's talk. Now keep in mind, I've only been doing Turo now for approximately seven months and already I have achieved super host status. Now this particular story takes place probably about maybe a week into my Turo hosting experience. So I'm sitting home minding my own Turo business when I receive a notification on my phone alerting me that one of my vehicles had been booked on Turo. I'm excited because that means money in the bank and you know we love money. So after taking a look at the reservation, I noticed that this is a delivery, which means I have to drive and deliver the vehicle to the customer. Not my favorite thing to do, but okay, I signed up. This is my business. Let's get it done. So being the courteous and professional tour host that I am, I reach out to guests to confirm the appointment details and also confirm the time that they would like delivery to be made. Guest promptly confirms their location and their delivery time, but throws me a little bit of a curveball when they inform me that they won't be there to take delivery of the vehicle. And that for me is a huge red flag. But listen, hey, I'm flexible, you know, and I want to make sure that I'm being accommodating to my guests. So I'm trying my best to confirm a time that the guests would be available. But every time and every option I'm proposing, they have an excuse or a reason in terms of why they wouldn't be able to meet that request. I know that some hosts offer remote check-in. That's not something I do. I'm not comfortable with remote check-ins, and maybe I'll do another video to explain exactly why I'm not, but I'm not comfortable with that. And so for that reason, I wasn't able to deliver the vehicle. The customer wasn't able to accommodate my schedule, and we quickly came to realize that this reservation was going to need to be canceled. So at that point, the customer contacts me and asks me to reach out to Turo to see if I can cancel the reservation on their behalf. I contacted Turo. They promptly canceled the reservation. But because the reservation had extended beyond the actual reservation time, the customer was assessed an $85 cancellation fee. Not at my request, but based on Turo policy. And that's when the threats began. Listen. I'm not one to go looking for a fight, but I am certainly not one to run. So when he started sending me these messages, I immediately went to level 10. Because sometimes in life you have to match the crazy. So as he continued to threaten me, I immediately contacted Turo. I also contacted my local authorities because if he did have the nerve, the unmitigated gall to show up at my house and I had to do what I needed to do, I wanted documentation that I had called and that I had tried to have authorities intervene. Turo did nothing. Uh, the police did nothing. No one I felt like really took his threat seriously. So at that point, whatever happens, happens. If you show up, I just hope you have insurance. I'll just leave it there. Um, but I did learn a lot of valuable lessons from this situation, and that's what I want to share with you. Lesson one is, if you are going to do pickup, do not use your personal address on the Turo platform. Choose a public location, maybe a mall, a store, someplace that's well lit, that may be within walking distance, or a cheap Lyft or Uber to or from to pick up your vehicle or deliver your vehicle. And also, do not use your personal phone number. Um, so, again, this was very early on in my Turo career before I really understood the platform to the degree that I do now. So if you are considering doing Turo, make sure unless you have a business address that you do not use your home address and you do not use your personal information. And in case you're wondering, he was all bark and no bite. He never showed up. I never heard from him again. And that was the end of that.